1986, New York City logged more than 1,500 murders, but the media was fixed on the killing of one woman. In August, 18-year-old Jennifer Levin's partially nude body was found in Central Park. The prime suspect was 20-year-old Robert Chambers. His physical appearance and private school upbringing garnered him the nickname, The Preppy Killer. But it wasn't just the suspect's good looks that made this case so sensational. Claims of rough sex and a shocking video had the public on the edge of their seats. For InsideEdition.com, I'm Sal Bono, and this is New York Gritty. I had no idea how big the case was. When the case ended, a uh, law school classmate of mine called me from California, said, I've been watching you on TV. I said, what do you mean? He says, well, the Chambers case. I said, in California? My name is Roger Stavis, and back in 1986, the Robert Chambers uh, case came into the firm about a week after I started. In fact, the case would be this former prosecutor's first foray into criminal defense and a complete departure from any assignment he had before. Uh, there was a new drug called crack. It is a crack epidemic, which police say is causing an increase in murder and other violent crime. Crime was rampant. Um, I think New York City last year had less than 300 homicides. In the Bronx, where I was an assistant district attorney, we used to have more than 300 homicides a year just in the Bronx. I had heard something on the radio uh, that morning about this case in Central Park. And uh, as soon as I got into the office, I found out that my office was going to be handling this case. The NYPD was quick to name a suspect. That's because they noticed a young man lurking around the crime scene with scratches on his face. This was a kid who fought for our life and lost. NYPD detective Michael Sheehan conducted an interrogation of Robert Chambers. Chambers had met Jennifer Levin earlier that summer. They crossed paths again that fateful August night in a popular bar on Manhattan's Upper East Side. It was a chance meeting. Uh, he was in, in Dorian's Red Hand, which was a, a meeting place for kids that age at the time. That whole crowd. Her biggest mistake is that she trusted Rob Chambers. She came to this park. Chambers told investigators they left the bar that night and went to Central Park. That's where he says Levin became aggressive with him. And she's raping you in the park? Robert, come on. She's having her way with me, without my consent, with my hands behind my back, hurting me. After hours of questioning, Chambers finally broke down and claimed responsibility for her death, but said it was an accident. To watch his face and, and his entire ensemble crumble, uh, is a feeling that every homicide detective feels, that you, you, know, you know you have the guy in the ropes. He punched himself in the leg and, and welled up with tears and the sniffles and said, what's my mother going to say? Chambers was charged with second degree murder. Once the public laid eyes on Chambers and the preppy killer moniker stuck, the media became obsessed with the case. That complicated Stavis's job as defense attorney. The first prospective juror was a young woman, and the judge, Judge Howard Bell, asked the young woman if she uh, has uh, any impressions uh, sitting here at the table about Robert Chambers, and she said, he's much better looking in person. She was excused. He was on the cover of People magazine, which I was not in favor of, but uh, it wasn't my idea. Uh, and wearing a blue blazer and looking rather dashing. Chambers pled not guilty to murder and the trial got underway. His attorneys played up his claim that Levin died while the two of them were engaged in rough sex, a strategy that did not go over well in the court of public opinion. What he says happened, this rough sex thing, is ridiculous. You know, it's, it's offensive. It insults the intelligence of any normal person. If you look at the reporting was that we were using the blame the victim defense. Uh, it wasn't a blame the victim defense, it was a explain what happened defense. I'm a defense attorney. All I care about is defending my client within the bounds of law and ethics. 
And within the bounds of law and ethics, I would do it again in a case if I had to do it. The news magazine show A Current Affair also got hold of video taken of Chambers while he was out on bail. Despite a murder charge hanging over his head, he appeared to be living it up and making what seemed like a tasteless joke with a doll. My name is... Oops. Stop! I think I killed him. It had nothing to do with her death. It was him being acting silly with a bunch of girls and I thought that they tried to make it as though it had something to do with her death. But shortly after the video surfaced, facing a deadlocked jury, Chambers decided to change his plea and accept a sentence of 5 to 15 years in prison for manslaughter. For two years I have not been able to say I'm sorry. I've not been able to say anything. But now I've, I wish to have my feelings known. Just like that, the preppy killer was off to prison and the media circus was over. A case like that is, uh, is not just a case, it's a, uh, it, it takes over your life. You work uh, seven days a week, you uh, work every night, um, and then, interestingly, uh, someday, with all of these cases, and I've had several over the years, they stop. But moving on wasn't as easy for others. This is not something that ever goes away. People say time heals, that's baloney. Time doesn't heal anything. Ten years after Jennifer Levin's death, her mother spoke with Inside Edition about losing her daughter. He said he, he threw her off him because she was hurting him, that she was raping him. And, and, and uh, you know, all of this other stuff that makes absolutely no sense to anyone. We made a bargain to get Robert Chambers off the street and into jail. And um, that's not what we had hoped for, but I really feel we had no choice. Driver, what's it like to be out? Robert Chambers spent the full 15 years behind bars for Levin's death and was released in 2003. Five years later, he was back in trouble with the law, arrested for selling drugs out of his apartment. He was sentenced to another 19 years in prison. It's just pathetic. Um, after all that, you know, you, you, you wasted your, you just wasted your life. Roger Stavis is still a criminal defense attorney in New York City. He hasn't spoken to Robert Chambers in years, but says this case not only defined his career, but the era in New York. It's just part of the zeitgeist, uh, if you will, of the 1980s. I think that that's part, part of the interest. What, we, what were the 80s like? You know, uh, Giants win the Super Bowl, the Mets, Koch, Donald Trump. I can imagine the questions I'm going to get today. Uh, whatever happened to him, but if you put it all together, those are those are quintessential New York in the mid-1980s. A lot of people remember the case and remember that this also could happen to your daughter. This also could happen to your son.